Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher and I've got a lesson on projectile motion or ballistics uh, using quadratics in the real world. And this is a, um, a short lesson that I gave for my e-learning students, but I want to walk through it just to sort of talk about it. You can sort of read along as we go. Um, but uh, sorry about the funny video aspect ratio, but I wanted to be able to fit everything on here horizontally in a good way. So anyway, it's not a widescreen, but that's that's how it goes this time. Uh, so the first uh, situation is that you're you're tossing a ball to a friend, and I gave a bunch of uh, information up here, but you release the ball from 1.75 meters in the air, and the friend catches it way over here, 20 meters away, again at 1.75 meters, which I didn't mark on this uh, on this graph. Uh, I didn't say, but there's some height that the ball achieves, and I decided to make it about 10 meters. And so that's the path that the ball follows from one person to the other. It's a nice parabola as long as there's no air resistance or anything like that. Um, so a few things to notice about the graph. We have a y-intercept here. I just decided to place the thrower at the uh, origin, stand, sort of standing here and throwing. So there's the y-intercept. And uh, I've decided on this vertex, which is halfway between the thrower and the catcher. It's at 10 meters away. And so I have a pretty straightforward uh, formula here with one exception. I've got a minus 10 here because there's a horizontal translation to the right of 10. And I've got a plus 10 here because the vertex is up 10. This is a uh, negative A value, the compression or stretch factor, because this is opening down. And one more thing, this is a fraction and it's kind of nasty-ish just because uh, that worked out nicely for... Uh, hitting these points here, this one, this one that you can't see, and my vertex. Um, if the ball was to travel higher, then this would be a larger number. If the ball was uh, sort of thrown faster and did not travel as high, then this would be a smaller number, making this a flatter parabola. Okay, now a few other points to notice. See this one over here, which is past the person standing. Um, this would be where the ball would hit the ground if they missed. If the ball would, have, if they miss it completely, the ball would hit the ground here at about 21. Uh, and this other point over here isn't really very meaningful, the one behind the thrower, unless you were to throw the ball back on the same path. That's where it would hit the ground as well. Uh, a couple other things that are interesting here. We really don't want this part of the graph. The ball doesn't travel below the surface of the ground. And same with on this side here. It's not coming from below the surface of the ground either. So those parts of the graph aren't really very meaningful. Um, so we're going to place some restrictions on the domain, the possible x values, and the range, the possible y values. So starting with x, we don't want x to be negative, so x has to start at 0. And we can't get past where it hits the ground, so 21.01, that's right here. So we only want x to be valid from here over to here. That's this restriction on the domain. On the range, it's going to go from... Uh, 1.75 up to 10 and back down to a 1.75 or maybe 0 depending on whether they catch the ball. Uh, so I'm going to skip fast a little bit of this but we do want y to be positive and y has to be uh, less than or equal to 10. And so there I've written out the domain in our usual format. x is an element of the reals such that 0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 21.01 .01. and the range for y same thing except it's between 0 and 10 and restricting that in Desmos, the graphing calculator software, that's what we end up with. If I wanted to stop things here, I can put a restriction on x to say it goes only to 20 and then I would also have a restriction on y, it would have to start here at 1.75. Anyway, that's a quick uh, run through on some ballistics, some projectile motion. I guess one other quick thing is that um, here if you wanted to be picky about those roots then these are the actual values, the two values that you can get for x for where it strikes the ground. Um, in order to really calculate that, it's not nice and factorable, and so you end up using the quadratic formula, which we'll be doing very, very soon. All right, and I will save the uh, profit versus price stuff for another video. Thanks.